You're working as a SOC analyst and one day you receive a message saying that an employee's computer has been infected with a virus. So what do you do? This actually happened to me recently at work. So in this video, I'm going to run through what we actually do when an incident like this happens. So first, we need to understand the general security architecture for a company. This can vary between organizations, but it should give you a general idea. Let's say you're a new employee and you've been given a new laptop for work. This laptop will be under surveillance with various monitoring systems. So in our case, we use Zscaler for web traffic monitoring, Palo Alto for firewall, CrowdStrike for device monitoring, Splunk for Windows event logs to check user activity. We use Splunk as our primary theme and the great thing is we can funnel all the logs from different sources into a central location. Okay, so now that we have a general understanding of the architecture, we can move on to the investigation. Keep in mind that this is not a strict procedure and this is just a general process. Generally, our incident response time is about two business hours. So the clock starts when we're made aware of the incident. So usually I would team up with another team member and we split the roles where they would reach out to the employee and get as much information as they can. My job would just to start digging through the logs in parallel to see what I can find. But the first step is to isolate the laptop from our network. What I do is go on CrowdStrike console and get the host information there. So I'll put in the user's laptop and host name here. So in this console, I can view information like the online and offline times for the device. I can also network contain this device, which basically cuts off all the traffic on this laptop and isolating it from our network. Scrolling down the panel, we can also see the history of what times the device was logged on and which user accessed the laptop. So in this particular incident, I could only see the owner of the device logging on, so it's safe to rule out that their laptop wasn't hijacked or anything. The next thing is to check for any system detections on this device. So whenever a malicious file like a virus was downloaded onto a laptop, the CrowdStrike sensor would detect it. So I need to go into endpoint security, endpoint detections, and put in the same host name and see if we get any hits. In this case, there wasn't any detection, so this indicates that the device was not infected with virus. Once the device has been isolated, the next step is to start remediating the threat. So we need to look at the web traffic for that user. So by web traffic, I'm mainly looking for browsing history. PSA for everyone, going into incognito mode is not going to hide your browsing activity. We can still see what you're searching for. So don't search for anything you wouldn't want anyone to see. Anyway, so for this, I can just search on Splunk and look at the index and run through the logs. So it will be index equals zscaler, user equals whatever the user's name is, change the time range to the date of the incident, and then hit search. Now that we can see all the web traffic logs that has been captured in this time range. So what we can do here is see which ones are useful to us. We need the URL field because at this moment, we were informed that the user searched something that involved a particular phrase. So going back up top, we'll add URL equals throw in the wildcard and put the phrase in the middle. We can see the results are narrowed down to just 45 events and we can just do stats count user URL to aggregate all the events by the unique pair of user and URL. It also makes it easier to visualize the logs. So in the results, I could see multiple links are JavaScripts. So let's refine our search query to exclude those. So we add brackets and throw in and URL does not equal to wildcard.js. Okay, so now we're down to 29 events. Since it's only a handful and there's duplicate domains, I can just easily run to the links through a URL checker to see if I get any malicious hits. So let's drop one of the links in there and we got a hit here. This one is flagged as malicious, so we need to block this one off. So during this investigation, my team member informed me on the specific website that the user accessed. So this was critical for me to narrow down the investigation. The first thing I need to do right away is block the website. Easiest way of blocking it is on Splunk SOAR because we already have the Zscaler API configured there. So what I do here is just run the action Zscaler, block the URL and just paste it in here. Now that we've blocked off the root source of the incident, we need to see if there are other websites involved. To do this, we need to use a sandbox environment, which is basically an external VM outside of our network. I personally use AnyRun, so I'll just drop the website here and run a public task. The good thing about AnyRun is it will give you all the connections and all the IOCs that it finds and groups them up neatly. So here we can see that the user actually clicked on the link which took them to a PDF which is 
imitating this I'm not a robot capture. This is clearly a huge red flag, but I guess the user didn't realize so they clicked on it. So this PDF redirects you to another website which appears to be malicious as well. I also noticed that there was a pop-up to allow for notifications when I was redirected to this website. So these were the IOCs that were found from the sandbox. We can see that there were connections to two other websites and multiple IP addresses. It's safe to conclude that any connections from this website is malicious, so I'll just go ahead and block everything off here. Okay, so now that we have remediated the threat, we can start assessing the damage. We need to check the firewall logs to see if there was any suspicious outbound traffic from the laptop. If there is, then there might be a chance that there was some data exfiltration. So going back to Splunk, our firewall logs are located in this index, and the source IP is the laptop's IP address. I'm going to throw it into a table and add destination IP so we can see the outbound. Then I'm going to add IP location function on the destination IP to reveal the geographical information. Since I'm based in Australia, we need to do a check on the traffic that are outside Australia. So here we can see that all the overseas outbound traffic is coming from the United States. And United States is not on our geo block list, so nothing unexpected there. There's a chance that this geographical information could be spoofed, so we need to check on the user activity. The last step in this investigation is to check the Windows event logs to see if the user's account was compromised. The purpose is to spot any suspicious activity like data exfiltration, which can be identified by a large number of copy operation on the device. Another thing to check is if the user's account was accessed during an unexpected time, for example, outside of work hours. We can check this easily by going back to Splunk and doing a search on win event log index, which contains user activity logs. We can filter the source to security and signature to this one here. Add in the username to narrow down the search. Also add them to a table so we can view it easier. And sort the time by descending order so we can get the latest event up the top. And just like that, we can see the sign-on times for this user. So after a thorough investigation of our findings, we were able to conclude that the user had not downloaded any virus, so the device itself was clean. There was no data exfiltration as well, so the severity of this incident was low. The user told us that they were seeing spam and scam Windows notifications, which they thought it was a virus. We found out that the notifications was the result of clicking on the allow notification on the malicious website. So the fix was an easy remediation on the notification settings. Okay, so you probably thought that was a lot of stuff to search and you're right. This is where a dashboard comes handy. So to increase efficiency on investigations, we can create dashboards which contains each of the searches that we have done. This way we can just pull up all the logs simultaneously with just a simple user search in the text box. Leave a comment if you want me to do a video on creating dashboards for things like this. Alright, so that's pretty much the investigation part done. The final step is just as important, which is documentation. This is the most boring but necessary step as you will get audits and it's very important to make sure every single detail is recorded. I'm not going to run through the documentation process because that's just going to make you guys bored. So let's just take this time to leave a like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.